Coming up on Roundabout, we have got 90 minutes to cover 60 cars, and the timer starts right now. Roundabout is sponsored by Advance Auto Parts. Visit our website, roundaboutshow.com, to get up to $30 off your next purchase, and by everyone's favorite online store, amazon.com. From the Roundabout Studios in Farmington Hills, Michigan, I'm Eric Tritko from IMAX Web and RumbleStrip.net. I'm the Motor City Greek, Manny Katakis from GMAuthority.com and WoodwardApparel.com. Opan Gangnam Style! Transmitting from a sports villa at the Route 10 Comfort Precinct here in the Penta District area, I'm Bob Hall. Korea and, and, Anna now! And uh, this, you know, is uh, Roundabout the Paris Motor Show Edition, eh? Good. Oh, did we want music? Yes, that could be. That mm. could work. Mm. I just want to fix that in post. You can't. This is the best part. Hello and welcome to Roundabout, episode number 144. It's our weekly chat covering car culture, vehicle reviews, and most of the news you chose to miss. Bull roar! We are back. Oh wait, you wouldn't have missed it this week because it's all about Paris. The timer's running right now. We've got a show to get through. I am on the show floor here in Paris. It's the, the, the Charles de Gaulle Convention Center. It's on the Rue de Automobile. And uh, we're glad you could join us roundabout live right now. Got Eric Tritko, Rumble Strip, Manny Katakis joining us again. And of course, Bob Hall via the Skype out in his temple of ineptitude in Hi, the California coast, California mountains. Good to see you all. Yes. <laughs> he has, he's seeing someone on the side. He's got a lazy eye. You see that? <laughs> anyway, we got 90 minutes. 60 cars revealed in Paris. The timer's running out. We've currently got 89 minutes remaining on the dial there, as you can see. Very nice analog clock you've made, Ben. Appreciate that. But we've bet, we better get started. We have a lot to get through, guys. No sense loiter gagging. And the first You're, one we've got. It's you. I know. Is the 2013 Honda CRZ. Apparently, it's getting an upgrade. Very purple, the vehicle they're showing here in Paris. It, it still features a 1.5 liter engine, but horsepower has been upped. Gets a new computer. Has 121 ponies from the gasoline engine now, and also is sporting a lithium ion battery pack, opposed to what I'm assuming would be a nickel metal hydride in the current version. Gets it another 20 horsepower. They're, cl they're claiming 137 metric ponies, so probably about 140 total in US numbers. So, a uh, minor update to a pretty unspectacular car. It's cute. Mm, you haven't driven one, have you? No, nothing an S2000 motor won't fix. <laughs> exactly. Bring on the K20. Whatever, Eric. Yes, to the front wheels. <laughs> the uh, Nissan Terra Concept. Uh, a zero emissions off-road vehicle, which means Carlos Ghosn is going to be investing in more technology that won't be usable for another 20 years. This is a fuel cell. Say what? Yeah, all-wheel drive crossover. Uh, Sort of a bigger, well, sort of juke esh front, well, very juke esh front end on the vehicle. Um, I believe John McElroy had a walk around on this car the other day. Mm. Um, the, the design styling, it's good, but it's fuel cell, which means it's pointless because the technology is still 20 exactly. years away. Exactly, exactly. And, and the hydrogen next. infrastructure. Well, actually, the, 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 tech, the technology is here today. The, I, the, the, infra fueling, the fueling station. Yeah, the, years the, the infrastructure, yeah, because we're going to spend, what, $5 billion that we don't have to... Do We're going to not spend any more time on it. How okay. about that? Maddie. 2013 Maserati Gran Caprio MC. Uh, basically, it's the current, uh, what's it called? The GT. It's a looker. It's a looker, oh. but it's got it's topless, too. And there's <laughs> nothing better. like topless lookers. Hey, I'm, I'm fans of the you topless speech. You can listen speech. to the 4.7 liter Ferrari V8. And it's right next to the Jeep display. Better. What Which, does that tell you? It's like <clears throat> the Daimler Chrysler days, right? It's, no. it's, it's family. It's DNA. It's you know family. the Jeep is one day going to have an engine from Maranello. Of course, and there will be a Kubang made in Detroit, where people get stabbed. Bob. <laughs> yes, hi there. San what about what about what about the San Yong uh, E14? If you use Roman numerals or EXIV or whatever the hell it's supposed it's to be. It's that Chinese company, right? They're Korean, damn it. They, they were owned <laughs> by the Chinese. San Yong, San Yong, you know, they've kind of been through the ringer. They were once owned by Daewoo, and they survived. OK, um, they actually have I, I know some of the guys, they actually have some really good people at the company and they're trying their damnedest to get things sorted out. What I like about this vehicle is for hybrid, they're not kind of bullshitting around. They've got a two cylinder, one liter engine in it and you don't need a big engine for a hybrid. Is it a um, Duchavo? 
in Chip, well, you know, it uh, could very well be, but uh, uh, since it's Korean and I can't do a Korean accent, I'll have to pass on that one. Upon Gangnam style. It is, it is. But no, they're, they're talking about 50 miles in pure electric and then uh, four hours to charge the pack. It's, it's kind of state-of-the-art at a current level, uh, doable. Uh, but at this point in time, you have to figure that there are even fewer Sanyong dealers in the States than there are Suzuki's, so don't hold your breath. Well, two, that, two, yeah. thing, two things. One, Make it, it doesn't look like it was 14 cars all put together for its styling, um, but why does it look like a Cheshire cat? We will never know. Meow! <laughs> Speaking of strangling babies, the noise Bob just made, 2013 mini it's a cat! Case. Oh, I'm sorry. I. Babies, cats, I have trouble with the animals. That's okay. That's all right. Stephen J. Ewing wrote this one. Curious. It's a mini story. The Paceman. Apparently it's a concept, a two-door version of the Countryman, making an unpractical vehicle even less practical. I'm not a big fan of minis, especially not the Countryman. And this it is does, just more that I do like the color. I do, however, like that Zune Brown. That's what they're calling Copper. it. Copper. <laughs> does it have a squirkle? It can squirt songs. <laughs> To other it, it does look countries. a little more like a mini than the countryman does, yeah. but that's, that's not saying much. So you can get your four motion, or your all four all-wheel drive, pardon me, 1.6 liter turbo engine, or naturally aspirated 1.6. So there like you go, you another open mini. The door and it's just like a ball pit, just falls out with like, you know, orange and blues and yellows, just like when you were a kid in McDonald's. Oh, that would be awesome. The play place? Yes. Oh, yeah, I like the tubes that, that some kids would get stuck in. <laughs> yes. Anyway, Eric. Volkswagen, GTI, Kleiner GTI. No, uh, no, I have McLaren <laughs> P1. Silly. After Paceman, I have yeah, McLaren P1. Oh, am I one? Well, do the next one then. I'm one. Well, I was like, down. I was just making Go. sure that I wasn't incorrect. So <laughs> chances are it's me that's wrong. Since we were talking about McDonald's, this is the next Big Mac. Ooh. <laughs> hey, you like right. that one. Yes, Very troll. Yes. So McLaren P1, obviously a play on McLaren's F1 heritage of P1 being pole position. This is their next ultra supercar. Um, the styling, some people like it, some people don't. I, I am a fan because it has a very um, Group C uh, look to it, plus the fact that the headlights are the, logo, are the, are the McLaren logo which I think is quite good. The styling is all based off of aero, and they're supposed to have uh, <clears throat> over 600 pounds of downforce when all the aero is deployed, so they don't care about ultimate top speed. Mm, uh, it'll be on 600 pounds, doesn't it? Uh, or 600 kilos, maybe, is what it was. It at looks like. <laughs> 30, yes, 600 kilos, sorry. Mm. 600 kilos of downforce at 125 miles, 200 kilometers an I hour. I heard the body was made of paper mache. No, it's all Keep carbon fiber. It's all carbon fiber. No, that's not what I heard. Um, it looks like a Nike shoe, like if Nike made a car. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Actually, actually, the, the car has one problem visually. is There's so much plan view on it. From certain angles, it actually looks very narrow. And a car like this, you probably want to look really wide. Hmm. Perhaps. It's knifing through the air, Bob, but we're knifing through our time. Manny, <laughs> Porsche. Porsche, Cayenne Diesel. Because who doesn't want a 627 pound foot SUV? Or of torque, rather. That's a lot of torque. That's insane. That's I mean, you're, you're approaching, you know, dually Ram Chevy Ford territory. It's going to pull up some tree stumps in Europe when you're driving to the, the club. Well, does to go it to actually come with a towing package? I don't even yes. know. Yes, you can get oh, a towing perfect. package. 5.7 seconds from uh, 0 to 62. Oh, that torque is only 5.7 seconds. Yeah, you would think it'd be a slow. It, it probably weighs like 7,000 pounds. Come on. <laughs> Bull roar. Hindered by the transmission, but we know that's not true. Yeah. I say malarkey, Bob. What is your take on this vehicle? Well, in a no, haiku, I, go. Anything, anything with torque like that, it's the torque of the town, I tell you. <laughs> that's our episode title, folks. Bob, you got the next vehicle on the list. Yes, proof that Mercedes, of course, still hasn't learned a damn thing from their ownership of Smart. They have the four stars concept. Now, four stars because it has a glass roof and you can see the stars, and it also has a movie projector in. So, as usual, they're worrying more about the little stuff around it than making it a decent car. And if it drives well, I would be shocked. Okay? Mm. I would be absolutely shocked. But uh, God, this, is, this is one of these things that Mercedes have only got to be keeping around for CO2 because it's a god awful vehicle. Let me phrase it. I should, I should be fair. I've got to be fair. This one may not be a god-awful vehicle. It may just be hideous. John, it's, John Lasseter called. He says that car is so ugly it wouldn't fit in Cars 3. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can believe that. Mm. The Australian term we would use is it's uglier than a hat full of busted assholes. <laughs> <laughs> a technical term. A lot of technical terms in Australia. Are you referring to rectal prolapse, Bob? 
I'm going to Pretty cut bloody you awful. Off. Anyway, next car, we've got the Audi Crosslane Coupe concept. Supposedly bursting with interesting technology. What that is, I'm not sure. Fosu, uh, features a mix of aluminium and other carbon fiber bits to keep the weight down. Features a 1.5 liter three cylinder engine with a smaller electric motor that acts as a starter and an alternator, plus another electric motor that adds uh, to the Audi's giddy up. So it must be a hybridized di drivetrain. They're claiming a top speed of 113 miles an hour with an average 176 horsepower. Not a bad looking concept, although not bad. I think. The Q1. Nice can we get a crossover that isn't that doesn't have the cross name designation in the name? Can, can we get just refreshing? not a crossover? Don't we have enough already? Can we just say no thank you to crossovers? Wouldn't that be refreshing? No, because you can't call Soccer a car a wagon. Are a growing market. Yeah, and you can't call it yeah. in America. So there you go. Call now. it in the state. <laughs> yes. No, use the Australian term station sedan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they called wagons for decades there. That's a... <laughs> Well, I guess so if the farm well up. the farms are called stations, so why not, right? Yeah, Absolutely that's right, station. you know. Yeah. Eric, you've got the Volkswagen. Yes, now we have a Volkswagen. Kleiner Gate something about starting the key. Go. So the Gen what are we in now? Seven Volkswagen. Seven. Uh looks very much like the Gen six and the Gen five and the Gen four. Lighter weight <clears throat> too. Yes, uh eighteen percent better fuel economy. Uh will still retain the two liter four cylinder turbo engine, but a slight bump in horsepower up to 217, although nowhere near what is going to be offered in its uh, kissing cousin, the A3 at Trihundo. Powered by horses. That. Yes. Um, hey, it's a Volkswagen. It's probably going to be the, you know, as far as build quality and materials, probably about best in class. And it'll fall apart in two years. Well, you know, lease, don't buy. Yes. All right. Next car. Who is up? Yeah, it's Manny. the BMW Concept Active Tour, which uh, really. Raise a lot of eyebrows. Front wheel drive BMW plug in hybrid. Kind of has the profile of, I want to say, a Toyota Matrix, except, you know, with a BMW clip in the front. Uh, you get a 190 horsepower, 147 pound foot uh, lithium ion engine combination, and that'll propel the car from 0 to 62 in under eight seconds, which, considering the power output, is kind of slow. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if anyone's ever driven a Volt, you know that that 0 to 30 is pretty exhilarating, and everything after that is done. <laughs> but, uh, hey, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a three-cylinder, isn't it? Yes. Yes, and uh, I mean, There's another thing, not only front drive, but a three-cylinder BMW. It's well, they, their whole new engine family is modular. They've got a new inline six. They can chop two cylinders off and make a four, chop another one off and make a three. Welcome to the future. I yep. guess. Um, yeah, this is another CO2 play, isn't it? Yeah. Of course. 94 miles per gallon on the European cycle. That's 2.5 liters per 100 kilometers for all of our European listeners. Uh, I don't think we have any. What about Mirko? Oh, yeah, I guess he's, he's more American than we are. Bob, <laughs> his Transit name's, Connect. His name's Mirko. Mirko. As long as Mirko and Reinhardt, American right? And European? <laughs> what about the Connect, huh? Or as they call it, the Torneo Connect in, uh, in Europe. He's a passenger um, version. Yeah, I, I, this is an interesting, it's always been an interesting vehicle to me. When, when the chief financial o officer of Ford drives one, there's something kind of neat there. Mm -hmm. um, the vehicle here looks, it, it's, it, it looks all new, but in fact, from what I've been able to get together from the dimensions, it's actually the existing architecture with a new body put up on top of it. Really? Uh, I thought they yeah. were doing it on, I thought I read it was on the new Focus, but maybe I was it, mistaken. It, it, it's, it's, dimensionally, it's, it's awful close <laughs> to the current one. We're talking, we're talking fractions and millimeters. Um, but the thing is, is that they've they've made the car much more family looking to the rest of the Ford line now, and uh, arguably more passenger car like than their European passenger cars are. Um, they should continue to do well. You know, it's got the benefit in the states; it's a unique vehicle, and it might not be the van everybody wants. But I'll tell you, on my side of the country, you see a hell of a lot of them being used for commercial purposes. You see, they're them, great for families. They see you see a few of them around here too. I just hope it comes with more than a four-speed automatic and a hundred horsepower. Yeah, it was six. It gets a six, I think. Yeah. Auto. Yeah. Well, staying in the Ford camp, new 2013 Fiesta gets a facelift and EcoBoost power in the form of Ford's new uh, one-liter three-cylinder engine. Just talking about a three with that BMW concept, but this one's out in production right now. Gets it a tidy 99 horsepower. I know they're getting a little bit more out of that engine in other applications. 125, 123, I think is the number they're using it Go in the Mondeo as well. Focus. Yeah, it's a great little engine. I drove it in a Focus here. They had a drive event. And before the uh, before the tech blogger blew up the transmission, did a tech blogger? <laughs> yes, a tech blogger who had never driven a manual transmission before was put behind. This is 
I heard from someone who was at the event, never driven a manual transmission before, so someone at Ford decided it'd be a great opportunity for them to drive a manual transmission. They proceeded, they were, they, this was early in the day, and they decided, they just, they then blew up the transmission in it, and it was the only one they had. I hadn't heard that, because yeah. they had two there when, at the event I drove it at, <clears throat> and they both ran fine. But anyway, this is going in the Fiesta, so it's getting active city stop as well to help uh, avoid crashes. I think this is a continental developed system, but... Uh, Fiesta's a good little car, B-segment vehicle. Ford's doing some updates to keep it fresh. Looks a lot better than today's model, yeah, I must that, say. The, much the, better. The nose is a lot tidier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, Even though it's got this huge gaping thing, it's a better huge gaping thing. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of huge and gaping, Eric, yes. Porsche <laughs> Panamera. The Sport Gran Turismo. Yes. Also known as the Panamera Wagon. The nice-looking one. There's, there's, there's two things that I really like about this, this vehicle. <clears throat> we'll go with number two first, and that's the front end well, and how they've, re hands. they've uh, restyled the headlights uh, with some LED stuff I think makes it look much more aggressive. It's very cool. And, of course, by making this a estate, a wagon, whatever you want to call it, Gran Turismo, Olo Negato or whatever, <laughs> they took care of the largest problem that the Porsche Panamera has, and that's its ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cheese hatch, wasn't it? Um, oh, yeah. So this it looks... Really, the back end of this looks quite good, actually. Um, and while there are many a Porsche file who are cringing at the fact that there's a wagon, um, well, they should have been. It's not a wagon; it's a five-door hatchback, or whatever it is. How, how do you tell the difference, Bob? What was it already got a third row of seats? Oh, what was already a five-door hatchback, though? It was a bulbous it's a, and unconfident five-door hatchback. <laughs> ah. yeah, the, but but see, the thing, the other thing here is the. The Panamera sedan had that absurdly tall roofline because Weeda King had to fit in the rear seat, even though nobody that bought it is going to put a giant in the rear seat. Yes. This hides that beautifully, and that's mm. why it works so well. Yeah. It is a nice looking car. The profile of the car is, is just it's screwed up by that tall, that tall roof, and this here, hides it. Here the extra length really gives this thing uh, gives a, a visual look of speed. Um, ben, if you can go back to the side view real quick. Um, yeah, that one right there. There, the car looks much faster with this profile than it does with the with the standard Panamera. Just it looks and that color is quite good. That light blue it's color. Got, Speaking it's of much got a lot faster, more dynamics. You gotta pick up the pace guys. Manny. Twenty thirteen yes. miniature Cooper. A miniature this uh, this car's a little bastard. Uh, <laughs> mini John Cooper works GP. Uh, you have two hundred and eighteen horsepower out of a one point six liter turbocharged inline four. Cranking out also a healthy one hundred and ninety two pound feet of torque or two hundred and seven pound feet during brief moments of overboost. When they like to have a little more fun. Yeah, just a bit. And uh, you have 0 to 62 in 6.3 seconds. 2,558 pounds. You know, yes. it looks awesome. 2,900 Because what I want to do is... 2,500. Okay, I was going to say. I, what I want to do is spend $50,000 on a Mini. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. Yes, that's a good point. The, the eccentric uh, little man. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to do that if you could spend $60,000 on one? What if you could <laughs> spend $17,000 on a brand new car? Bob? You can get a car that cheap these days? Yes, Opal you can. Adam. And it's an Opal. Yes, that's right. Remember Opal? So it's going to be Pontiac soon, right? <laughs> well, no, it's going to be a Saturn. It's a Saturn, Saturn yes. Yes, it's a Saturn. This is the Opal Adam, okay, which is the car that's going to save Opal. It's actually a neat little small car. Um, the power goes from a Rorty 69 horsepower up to almost 100, 99. Um, it's going to be a start about 17 grand. This is actually in a very, very good segment to be in Europe because it's still showing some, some reasonable sales. Um, they've done some quirky things on it. I like it. It's neat. It's got personality. But I don't know if it's going to help Opal a whole lot because Opal's problem is in Europe, it's not cool. Well, it's Ford's the Black a, Friday edition, right? Yeah, it could look that way. Neunen, it if it comes with Neunen, Neunen, Sig, Luft balloon power. <laughs> have, you, yeah, have you read just the, about old and Nina is hiding in the, the hatch somewhere. <laughs> the color, um, the color palette is like Albie Block, Papa Don't Peach, Purple Fiction, James Blonde, Saturday White Fever, and White My Fire. You know, it just goes on and on. That's brilliant. It's, all American it's, cultural it's, references, it's but really, neat, it's kind of a neat idea. But I just wonder if it's you know too little, too late for mm. Opal. Well, isn't but, the isn't no, the idea think, that they're going to take take Opal and put it upscale and make Chevy the cheap brand? Well, they have Cadillac in Europe now too. It's just. Uh, Opal, anyway, we got the Renault Clio, or is it the Clio? The client. Uh, the client? <laughs> Clio! Miss Clio, there's a new tarot card reading for you. Remember that till she got arrested? Local area celebrity, never mind. Was Renault she reading Clio. Mel Farr's? Uh, <laughs> it was the superstar dealer. That's right, it's Mel Farr, superstar. Okay, let's go. Clio, it's a B-segment car that's closely related to the Nissan Versa. Let's move on. 
That's a one point. And, no, you forgot to add, and will never be seen in North America. Of yes. course not. It's a 90 horsepower, 1.5 liter well, DCI that's not, diesel. Well, that's not true, Bob. There is that one little uh, part <clears throat> to the north in the north uh, northeast part of Canada that is still a French oh, territory. Saint Pierre et Miquelon. Oui, certainement. Yeah, c'est vrai. Je suis un fou. Eh. Okay. Cool. Next. Let's go, eh? <laughs> Eric. Yes. Rolls Royce Art Deco. My favorite period of the 20th century is oh, the Art yes. Deco period. Absolutely. Um, I give you the Empire State Building. I give you the Chrysler, the Chrysler Building. building and Which is what? cooler than the Empire State. I it's agree. Not a fall. Size ain't everything. E exterior, yes. Interior, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff in the Empire State Building interior <coughs> I really like better. But anyways. Uh, so Rolls Royce taking the spirit of, you know, the the... The excess of the 30s while everyone else was, you know, in poverty feels very similar to now for some reason. Um, Indeed. <laughs> um, anyways, they're, they're taking a bunch of the style and implementing it on, uh, on their current lineup with, uh, with uh, some cues, with both <laughs> interior and exterior, with some color choices. And, um, I mean, this will be very limited edition across the uh, limited edition on limited edition vehicles. Um, you see the license plate on that? It says Dressage 1. Yes. Yeah. What does that mean? Oh, yes. Yeah, so what does that mean? Dressage one. Uh, the other, the the, the the convertible number is dressage one. The the, the coupe is a uh, mint one, I think. Mm. Well, well beautiful the, the Art Deco period was was introduced at one of the Paris shows in 1925, yeah. so, or technically launched. So or coined but, or something. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's a small detail stuff. It's not as over. It's not as Art Deco is. I was hoping they were going to go with it, but I suppose if you're just doing there are some flourishes and the colors yeah, exactly. are original. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I mean, there's little things they do to give it that, but I like it. It's cool. Manny. The artwork they did for the whole thing, though. Was Toyota GT86 Hashiroku 2 is got a TRD package now. Uh, it hasn't been confirmed for the Scion yet, or the Subaru for that matter. Uh, you got your same boxer engine, but you've got a whole bunch of you know new body body kits. You got new air dam, new this. So new it that. goes faster then. With it all looks, this it goes stuff. slower because you're adding weight and no horsepower. It adds so much horsepower with the body kit, though. And increasing drag. Yes. They forgot to bring in the sticker package, though, because everyone knows that stickers... Because well, you have to put all on. of your no, sponsorship no, 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 stickers Bob. that you're not getting sponsored yes. by, right? Okay. Bob, you're saying drag. That drag is beneficial for braking. Let's be honest, okay? It's fun. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by the way, there is a... Uh, there is a uh, local Detroit, semi-local Detroit tuner down in um, Toledo, who is putting... <laughs> semi-local Detroit and Toledo. You can't trust <laughs> anything from Ohio. Well, you know. It's a red but state. But he, uh, he's yes. developed a turbo kit for these, which will actually put out, uh, boost the rear wheel power up to about 250 on it. Yeah, and that's... still be able to run on pump gas. So it gives it the power it really needs, but it's more that it boosts the torque up quite a bit. And that's the real issue with yeah, that Yeah, tuners car. wasted no time on that car. They just... they blame went, them. They took it in the shop. The and torque they... was yeah. so... That was the only thing is the torque is non-existent in that car, and it's really hard to drive. And anyway. just... Putting around. Yeah. Moving on, Bob Rixus. Uh, yes, this Whoa. is the famous uh, LFCC, and if you squint at it, uh, it's basically going to look a lot like what the next IS looks like, which will be around, I believe, towards next the end year? of next year. Yeah. Um, it's got the Lexus Qs with the hourglass grill. They've done some interesting stuff, like the LED lights are not covered; they're exposed. Um, there's some neat stuff on this car. I think you know Lexus has got an interesting design direction, and the product is is kind of getting slapped around. Uh, good old Mr. Toyota made the comment that uh, they blew it with Lexus first go around, and he wants to make sure they don't blow it again. So with it looks the, like they're on the right way. The I was a little disappointed in the rear. The, the Up to about the B pillar, uh, I like the styling from the B pillar back. I think it leaves a lot to be desired. But well, we'll have to see a production car for that, though. But, I mean, it, it, for a concept, you know, some of the stuff is usually, it's like they've turned the chroma up too high on a color TV. This, um, that's the the rear part. Eh, anyway, sorry. I just, I love the front part of it, but the back part is. I, I like what they do with the body section. They got some really neat combination of, of uh, large type surfaces. There. Yeah. Yeah. The, it, it the gives back it a nice pot look. Looks a bit like a Prius. Well, what do you think of the spindle grill? Really quick. Lexus well, spindle grill. Love it. Personally, I don't like it, but but it's got, you know, it, particularly because Nissan's doing something vaguely similar. Well, kind yeah. of reminded me of an Audi, the single frame. Obviously, it's tweaked, but. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not what I would have done, but, you know, more power to them for realizing they needed to do something. And something distinctive and different. Yep. yep. Anyway, moving along. Speaking of Audi, next up, the Audi A, or pardon me, S3. This car is going to be hot. 300 horsepower in a, uh, a C segment. Hatchback, it's a GTI, basically a GTI, 300 horsepower. I'm sure Quattro all-wheel drive. The two-liter 
engine has been completely reworked to handle all that power. I'm sure it's forged everything. And of course, you can get a, an S-Tronic automatic transmission if you want. I'm sure a manual is available as well. It even weighs 11 pounds less than the previous version and gets better fuel economy. What's not to like? Let's hope the this price car tag. comes yeah, to the United States. The, the, price yeah, the, I was going to say the $45,000 mm. price tag on it. Is, is that the car they're going to be building in the plant uh, that's going to be over on this side of the ocean? Perhaps. But I don't know if they've announced anything. I thought they were. I thought they were doing uh, the Q5, Q7 in that one. Okay, I just was curious, because you know it, it would make sense to do the cheaper car, which has a shallower margin. That's all. Yeah. Anyway, beautiful car. Hope we see it here. But you never know. Eric, another McLaren. Yes. Special. So these were there were some patent uh, sketches filed on what the actual production uh, P1 will be, and it dives into more of what the active arrow is going to be, including the rear, a lot of the rear spoiler, um, even more so than what they're doing with the MP412C. Um, this really, even from this view, you get even more of how um, <clears throat> sculpted the car is, and um, I guess you're going to be doing some, some active arrow even more up in the front as well as the, uh, the rear. So That wing is just crazy. This is bonkers. <laughs> well, bonkers. remember McLaren started it in 1965, I believe, and they're just... Uh, with the Can Am car and yeah, the retractable wing. Hmm? It was retractable. No, it, it was it would sit. The, the original Can Am car had a wing that was fairly with a little bit of a down <laughs> angle for okay. for that, and then under the brakes it would turn vertical. Oh. Uh, to help to assist in the brake, it would basically act as a big air brake. Hang on, hang on. That was Chaparral. Or was it Chaparral? Chaparral 2D or sorry 2C. Why was I thinking that was McLaren? Because they even had it was even in a Chevy. You're right, it was Chaparral. It, you're right, it was Chaparral. Because then he then he came up with the uh, he had the um, the uh, snowblower motor, two stroke motor for the uh, for the suction <clears throat> sucker car. The sucker car, yeah, right? Was, yeah. yeah, that was the, that was the two uh, two J and the two H was the aero car that Jim Hall himself did. The the sucker car was actually bought by GM guys. <laughs> Not that Jim Hall. <laughs> Yeah, it was a different gym hall. Yes. Anyway, Manny, 2013 Lamborghini Gallardo. The new Gallardo, it got a, uh, a refresh, and it kind of looks like more of a futuristic dust buster than it <laughs> has before. I don't know. I, in my eyes, I, I think they ruined the look. That's I, different. There's a lot, of, a lot of lines. It looks like it's, like they're, they're stretching it out, and there's thin lines, there's thick lines. and hmm. It's it yellow. It is. Does she come in the car? <laughs> uh, she can. I'm sure if you have the car, she'll, 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 she'll be happy, along. Happy shortly. to go along with you. Yes, yes exactly. All right, Bob, another it's Volkswagen. Called... Yes, another Volkswagen. The, the actual <laughs> seventh generation Golf, I refuse to call it a Mark 7. It's a Golf 7. Yeah, Sieben? you know what I mean? Call it that. Just a little yeah, car. And I know Eric, Eric is no big fan of it, but I have to admit, I like what VW is doing in some respects styling wise because they're doing some very, very nice professional, very tidy bits of design that are evolutionary, where you know the car is what it was, but it's not as, um, they don't have the problem the Japanese have where they don't change the car enough, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, they kept the good stuff, they got rid of the bad stuff, and most importantly, it's a lot lighter yes. uh, for a modern car. Normally now, they, uh, it's not <laughs> uncommon for a car to pick up 50 to 70 kilograms just to meet safety, and they've actually pared down by, I think, uh, something around 30 or 40 kilograms, so that's pretty damn good. Um, and again, it's a VW. It's a great car, well put together, uh, and you'll love the first two years of ownership. <laughs> Until it starts falling apart. It doesn't fall apart. Just things decide they want to go with you when you leave the car. <laughs> Divorce themselves. They like you. <clears throat> they like you. They like, whoa, I'm back Hi, on the ben, streets ben. here. Can we see the timer, Ben? Mm, timer. Stand Please. by for timer. Timer! Okay, thank uh, we're, you. We're doing okay. Next up, Chevrolet I, Trax. Ben should be showing rendezvous in the background. Well, um, yeah. How can I drive we, we backwards, Ben? Am I that good? <laughs> Pretty good. Can you you might want to look over your shoulder, Craig. I'll you, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the princess tunnel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> that was in bad taste, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Next so up, Chevy Tracks. I feel like I'm in a Ronin. we has got the Chevy Tracks not coming to the United States. Most Tracks? This looks like the uh, a version of the Buick Encore, if I'm not mistaken. A bit. Like that uh, fancy potato they showed at the auto, Detroit Auto Show last year. Gets a, earlier this year, actually. Gets a 1.4 liter inline four gas engine, 140 horsepower, 149 torques. Fun fact about yeah. the tracks, uh, they had to rename it as Tracker for the Russian market uh, because oh dear. tracks, I guess, roughly translates to a, like a, a slur, like a sexual like, slur. 
So they couldn't they couldn't market a car that was called the, the Trax well, in Russia. And I, I heard that from two Russians. Mm. Well, that's a good authority. Be popular. <laughs> <laughs> it would be. It depends on the act. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, small crossover Chevrolet version of presumably the Buick on call. With that one armrest. Is the, is the, uh, one armrest. One armrest. On the driver's seat on that driver's folds seat, up, yes. oh, like the horrible Korean cars used to have. Mm. Precisely like that. Yeah. Well, in happier news, Eric. Yes. A 5,000 pound race car. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bentley Continental. Oh, that's cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bentley Continental GT3 race car. So it's unclear. This is a concept at this point, although word is they will go GT3 racing with it next year. The question is whether they're going to run the twin turbo 4-liter V8 or the 6-liter W12 in it. That doesn't look quite right. You had it. There you go, Ben. Um, they showed the car. It is completely stripped out interior, although it did have an Elcantara dash in it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so only one bull died in the making. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it could be. It could be good. And I suppose if you are, you know, a uh, landed gentry and want to go racing, this is your vehicle with which to do so. Uh, they did make a point that the number seven on the car is the same number as the uh, Le Bentley. Mans yeah, the, the Bentley Le Mans car that won in what two thousand. Uh, 1929 also, as I recall. Oh. Mm -hmm. Fancy that. It was, seven, it was 70 in 2000 for another reason. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Many. Another Audi. Yeah, speaking of expensive cars as well, an 88,500 euro Audi RS5 Cabrillo. Is that euro or like gyro, the Greek sandwich? It's not a euro. Okay. It's euro, the currency. To ask. The things that Greeks don't have. Greek, Greek, yeah, Greek, exactly. Greeks don't believe in euros. <laughs> yes, we use drachmas. It's the second economy there. Mm. Don't tell anybody. Black market. That actually that translates to uh, one hundred eleven thousand five hundred dollars, which is I is mean, that is that with the VAT though? Yeah, I mean that that's just just using a like you know rough exchange rate. That's not going to be in, what it is. Of course, in it, France you have a seventy five percent excise tax because you're too rich to own the car. So uh, I see. Not anymore. <laughs> well, it is actually confirmed for the U.S. in twenty thirteen, so it will be priced probably a little bit more affordably. Eighty thousand. Yeah, eighty thousand, not a hundred. Okay, so you can pick ridiculous. a couple up then. No big deal. Is this just, like four hundred and fifty horsepower? Yes, mistaken. it's still got that uh, the 4.2 liter, uh, 0 to 60 and under 5, yada, 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 we know the whole RS3 thing, 5 thing. Yes. I, I, excuse me for pontificating sure. on this, but this is like an M3 convertible. Why would you want to spend that kind of money on a performance car and then lose a percentage of its ability to deliver by cutting the roof off uh -huh. and adding weight? Uh, I, I just, people, people, it's a poser mobile. Exactly. Well, that, exactly. You just nailed it. There's, there's a certain demographic in the general vicinity of which you live. Ben? you got to level up. Is Ben still with us today? There we go. Double level up, one for Bob and one for Eric. Thank you. We'll learn one. Oh, oh, back on the road again. All right, Bob, Suzuki. Yes, yes the Suzuki. The Suzuki, the Seacross. Way of life. Which, it's, it is way of life, okay? <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, it's not life in a new era. Or like it's it's uh, no that was what they did for the other one. In any case, this is this is their taking a C segment uh, kind of crossover vehicle, and they made a big deal about they're going to do all these new models for Europe and no dealers for the United States. So don't don't expect to see this. But everything in this car, every single design characteristic on this, you have seen someplace else. Uh, they gave no specifics about the car from a technical standpoint, and it looked pretty much like it was a pushmobile with nothing really underneath it in terms of uh, axles, except maybe a couple of beams and some spindles. There is a real car driving around in Europe they've been using for testing, but uh, don't, don't wait for it here. Uh, I'd actually rather than see this, I'd like to see a bunch more Suzuki dealers and see them bring the Swift here, which is a cool little car. Mm -hmm. I think I'm the only guy on the earth who actually likes a Kizashi too, but there you go. Next up. The Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG electric drive, guilt-free, zero-emission supercar fund for a mere $537,000. $537,000. Achtung! Berlin to Warsaw in one tank. What do we go to there to say? 740 combined horsepower? 737. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Berlin to Warsaw in one tank? Didn't they use a lot more tanks in 39? Yes. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> yes. The Panzerkampfwagen 4. Anyway, they had 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.9 seconds. That's less than four. All I want to know, is that a vinyl wrap on the car? It's a blue color. It sort of looks like it's a chrome sort of finish. Well, that's why I'm wondering if that's a, if that's a vinyl wrap. 
you know, because they have it's chrome. Like they just pulled the lime green wrapping that was on the one that was on Nias <laughs> and just put the blue yeah, stuff on. Exactly. So, yeah, there you go. Fast supercar, electrically driven. Uh, the answer to a question nobody cared to even think about. Next car, Eric. Yes, so, it, and McLaren again, why? I don't know. It was in the rundown three times, so I figured since I talked about it once, I could talk about it three sure. times. Um, and really, there's nothing else to say that we've already, we haven't already covered with it. <laughs> well, good. That gives us an easy out. What's your stance on this? Oh, car? I guess, I, I'm sorry. The pictures that are shown are shown in its race stance, which is uh, 40 millimeters lower than what it will normally be seen at going down the road. You have that, the air suspension lifts it for easy access, right? And so you can go over anything, any bump the humps the road. and, you know, traffic humps. Piece of gravel. You can drive yeah. over that too. Small children, roadkill. Mm, I don't know about children. <laughs> if you hit one, it would just cause the car to explode, probably. <laughs> All right. Carbon fiber bits everywhere. What is next? Bob, for whatever reason, you're next. Yes. Jaguar F Type. The new sports car, first so called real sports car in 50 years from Jaguar. Um, neat piece of work, three engines. You get a choice of two V6s, uh, three liters, different outputs. Everything's supercharged. Then they have a five liter V8, of course, which, because, you know, I've never met a horsepower I didn't like. Litra. Uh, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Some people have been kind of two faced, uh, two, no, two, two minds on the, the front, because the face is a little bit odd by Jaguar standards. The rear actually has a very, very strong 1961 E type flavor, which is kind of cool. A uh, buddy of mine who's driven the car said it actually drives absolutely super. Just a neat piece of work. Um, so the F type coming out, we're supposed to be seeing it, I think, uh, next year, I believe. Next yeah. calendar year. Sorry, next model year. We might see it uh, early, in the, early in the calendar year. Isn't it eight speed? Uh, is it automatic transmission only? Yeah, at this stage, it's the eight-speed ZF, um, which, the, if, I, if I have heard, shifts faster than most human beings. So the only way you could bitch about it is if you were, you know, just you wanted you wanted a manual, not because it was better, just because it was a manual. Mm-hmm. Am I a wrong? Like am, that, I, that. am I wrong from like the that that very high top front view that it looks a bit Ferrari-ish? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I, I'm not sure that was going to be something they intended, or if it just, a lot of the parameters are the same. When you put the lights, you want to have this amount of planning, you want to have that amount. You have aero doing issues, a, cooling issues. Yeah, exactly. So so I think I think some of it could be coincidental. Personally, I can't see the JAG designers doing that. Yeah. Okay, they got enough of a heritage, they don't need to. Right. No, I just, it was very coincidental kind of thing. I'm like, eh. Yeah, I really think so. I really think so, Eric. Um, a neat piece of work from everything I've heard people I've talked to. And I, again, a buddy of mine drove it, and he just he said it was, was Over, one of the best things he's driven in five years. Overall length is pretty short on that, too. Too, isn't it? I mean, it, it is. It is a nice compact size. That's a, that's another appeal it has to me. It's not one of these sports cars. It's the size of a you know, a Coupe de Ville aircraft carrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good piece of work, actually. Do you like the design? The front end I find looks very odd. Yeah, the, it's got it's got probably a few more slices and scarfs and snarfs and nibbles <laughs> than I would have liked. But uh, I think in general, it's it's a, the the proportion of the car is good, and if if you get the proportion right, it's very hard to screw up the car. The body surfacing is nice because they, they kept it taut and tailored, didn't go over the top. It's just in the front, gets a little bit, eh, but it's relatively minor, you know. And the most important thing is the interior is quite nice. Mm -hmm. And the guy making the payments, that's where he is most of the time. Yep. Generally. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So we had a duplicate of another Lamborghini, so I swapped something else out, Manny. Oh, you surprised me. Did you put the Corvair oh, in? Yeah. <laughs> I wish. I wish we put the Corvair in. Huh. Ooh, this got, oh, look at the Puplins. Is this show going to the dogs? <laughs> This is the random auxiliary dog show, day three. There's a golden show. and a Labrador. A little lamb. Those dogs are 52 years old in human, air, human years. <laughs> Look at the puppies. Give them a pet, Craig. Out of the way. You might want to use your other hand. Were you know. walking like an Egyptian that looks there? Like, that looks like Clayton trying to hold up a document. <laughs> you could not make a good weather. That's an friend. air pet. <laughs> they are oh, good guy. Yeah. Meanwhile, the other dog is drooling down his shirt. <laughs> I got to take care of here. See, I can... scratching him under the jowls there. Not that this is more interesting than okay. puppies, but uh, we've got the Peugeot 208 type R5 rally car. Looks fast. It is fast, and they plan on rating it. Or yeah, they, they Peugeot plans on uh, racing it in the Intercontinental Rally Challenge and the European Rally Championship and the National Championships. That's a lot of championships. That's a lot of racing. Holy malarkey. Yeah. That's P Peugeot, or I've heard people say Peugeot. Peugeot. I don't know. Peugeot. 
I, I don't cares? know what the difference is. But what I do know is that it's time to take a commercial break and talk about our friends at Patriot Financial. No, it is not. We're actually talking about Amazon. And if you go to roundaboutshow.com, that is our website. Look at the top of the page. There's a banner ad for Amazon. You click on that banner ad. It takes you to the Amazon storefront where you already do all of your online shopping because Amazon is such a such a gigantic seller of all kinds of things. Anything you want, you can get on Amazon. <clears throat> what we're asking you to do is go to roundaboutshow.com, click on that banner ad at the top of the page, and we want you to do your shopping as you normally would on Amazon because the deals, let's be honest, are so great. If you subscribe to Amazon Prime, for instance, you can get free shipping, two-day shipping on anything you buy. How do you beat that for 80 bucks a year? The answer is you don't. So, to highlight some of the breadth and the depth of the products offered on Amazon, and to help encourage you to purchase more items from Amazon, we always like to highlight some of the things they have. And this week, our pick of the week, Eric, is from you. Yes. And it is a little handheld Sony Handycam of sorts. Now, is this, a, is this a, an 8 millimeter tape uh, no. camera? No. Neg <laughs> High 8? Negative. No? Okay. Negative. All right. Uh, this is the latest in, in the war of the small point of view cameras. Of course, uh, contour cameras, GoPros are very popular. Um, Drift HD and, and a few others. Well, Sony is finally uh, diving in and with this offering, there's the, this one is the Sony HDR AS15. Uh, this is the one, there's two versions. This is the top of the line model, which has a, a Wi-Fi connection so that you can control, do all the controls and get a live picture view on your uh, smartphone, whether it's an uh, Android phone or a uh, iPhone. Picture view? Picture view, yes. You can have a live view because there is no screen on there. Oh, my goodness. Um, so this will do, yeah, and you can oh. see the picture of how you can strap it onto your, your helmets, and they've got, it can go under, it's got an under, it's good, to, it's got a case where you can take it underwater up to 120 feet. Shucks um, almighty. The really cool thing if you're into the action stuff is that it will do 720p at 120 frames per second. Oh, high speed. Which means you can do some really cool slow-mo stuff. So there's a, there's been some videos that have been done by Sony that show snowboarding, that show skateboarding, uh, surfing, uh, mm. and they really show what you can do. Wow. Yeah, so with uh, by using that 720 at 120 frames. Yep. Um, so I am uh, going to be ordering one of these next week because my contour camera has been not recording when I've been asking it to, and I've missed several uh, important action yes. things when I've been on auto drive. So yeah, you had a camera on your Ford Contour. Yes. <laughs> oh, cool. It was an SVT day. even. Mm. <laughs> so it blew up at 6,000 RPM rather than 5. Ah, that's good. Anyway, we thank Amazon for their support of Roundabout Show. We, at, we encourage you to go to roundaboutshow.com. Click on the banner ad at the top of the page up there. It's your ticket. To, uh, well, not savings, but you're not going to spend any more. Same great prices. You're just going to help us out, your favorite automotive feed podcast. Do it for us, please. So that covers the advertisement. Back to the meat and potatoes of tonight's show. I think we've got to talk about some cars. Next up is an Audi 2013 A3 Sportback, the E-Gas project. It's supposedly a carbon neutral vehicle. What else is there you to say? off-gassing problems? Exactly, yes. What, I, I haven't had an opportunity to look at this. It's like LED headlamps and a bi-fuel powertrain. That's part of Audi's uh, E-Gas project, electronic so gas. It's an e -gas you can run it on regular gas or compressed gas. Yeah. So there you okay. go. That's a relief. I thought you ran on an earwax or gasoline. <laughs> earwax. It is dual fueled. Yeah. So it's a classic lift back styling from Audi. Very nice, very sharp looking vehicle. So there you go. Who's next? Eric. Yes. Another Peugeot. Yes. So this is the performance version of the ubiquitous RCZ that uh, Peugeot, Peugeot, Peugeot sells uh, in France and other parts of Europe. Uh, pumped up for, it's a uh, higher horsepower, a little extra styling. Um, of course, the ubiquitous uh, flat matte paint that all show cars must have these days. But it, it, it does uh, have and, a much better. Sorry, sorry, Eric. It has a much better nose with the facelift. The previous well, car was just hideous in the front. Yeah. Uh, the other thing they did. There's another uh, Peugeot uh, show car called the Onyx, which is the same uh, paint color, and then the front fenders had uh, polished copper on the front fenders, which is just stunning. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing looking. Well, here what they've done is they've put it on the pillar. Yes, thank you, Ben. Um, this car is just maybe the best looking prototype car I've seen in, ever the, in a long time. It's another honest. hot Peugeot that the design department came out with and is great and they're never going to build. 
But here on the uh, RCZ, here. they took that copper and did yeah. it on the um, the A pillar oh, that yeah, sweeps back it. to the C pillar, and it's really does a, it tarnish and turn green? Yes, actually, Sweet. and that is intentional because they want to show how a car that the car changes over time. That's brilliant. That's part of the design aesthetic. Brilliant. You leave that parked outside Detroit for 20 minutes. Stolen. <laughs> the copper is gone. <laughs> copper, the right. copper is gone. All right, Manny. Uh, Mark a, 7 GTI. Again? Didn't we already do this one? Yeah. I think um, we did. Well, we better it redo the, it. We might as well. <laughs> performance, well, according to uh, Autobild, a German car magazine, there might be a performance package coming, and that will bump up go. the horsepower output to 227 horsepower. 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. Not bad for a little pocket rocket that is the Golf GTI. I, I, what do you think about the uh, the lines there on the sides that just kind of like swoop backwards? In the the, the horizontal line on the yes. door? No, 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 in the front fascia. Oh, oh. Well, it's different. I don't mind that, actually. It, just, it, makes, black lines it, it separates the Mark 6 from the Mark 7. Well, there you go. That's it. Let's ask the designer, though. Well, I, I, uh, there's more to it than that. The grill proportion is different relative to the headlights and such. The, they, are, they are different if you... You see the differences, as it were. Uh, unfortunately, the specific pictures you don't have because when Ben hung up on me, he didn't bring my my pictures back on my Skype. So I'm having to guess what you guys are looking at because the tape delay. I think it's about 15 minutes right now. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> well, Thanks, in that case, ben. <laughs> I'll be fine. I'm fine. Well, Bob, you got to look. Let, look let me t I don't need an intro on in this. At every auto show, there are a lot of cars we want to see. You know, stuff you drool over. You say, I wish you could get that. And then there are the cars we are actually going to get. <laughs> okay? And the Nissan Juke Nismo, sadly, is probably one of those. Okay? Um, I know the Juke has, has the people that like it. I know that they're six or eight, maybe, maybe even 12 now. Um, but uh, this, is, this is what a Nismo take. Now, this is really sad to me because when I think Nismo, I think GTR. And the only thing this seems to have in common with GTR is a badge and four tires. Um, you know, I guess there's somebody. Do you know any? Do you know anybody? Do you, do you guys know anyone who would like this? It's a no. stretch, but maybe, the, maybe the, for a day. Okay, because because if if you do, please don't introduce that person to me. Okay, <laughs> I don't want to know somebody like this thing is just. I mean, it is god awful. Sorry, um, the juke is is real hard to take anyway, and uh, this makes the bad worse. So there you go. Is it not the delicious? A car like that will probably look good in front of a lot of neon lights like Vegas or something. Or Tokyo. I think it'd look I think it'd look good uh, after it's been through a, a, a crusher. Yeah, I was gonna say I knew you Beat the crusher. Be <laughs> yes. Next up we have a uh, NASA Mercedes Benz. The B class electric drive concept merges entry level luxury with plug in technology. So this is a Sherle Sher Volt, it sounds like. We were just talking about that. A bit. Yeah, hundred kilowatt. Electric motor. Sounds like that BMW. It's hatchback. 93 mile an hour top speed. It looks like a little bulldog of a car. It's got 229 torques under the hood. And Mercedes Benz isn't disclosing if it has a, the lithium ion battery's capacity. So there you go. It is capable to be charged through any 230 volt outlet. Using a quick charge 400 volt outlet, it can uh, rack up enough range to cover 31 miles in less than an hour. Not a bad rate of speed, although I don't know where you find a bucket load of 400 volts. Not just everywhere. What do you guys think of this car? It's blue. I like that. Is that it's, they're BMW? using the same plastic wrap, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> Saran brand. So. Uh, it's cool. It's another EV. So the color is cool. Anyway. Yep. That's about it. <laughs> All right, Eric. I put you down for the Peugeot. Yes. Onyx. So this is a riff on uh, Peugeot's uh, MP3 scooter, which is a three-wheeled scooter, which is a pretty unique front um, front suspension where the two front tires are very close together and they, they lean at angles um, when, you, when you make the turn and then it has one rear wheel. Well, this is an electric version of that, uh, and then it has going with the uh, Onyx concept thing that Peugeot has running through them where it is the uh, matte gray or matte, it's not black, it's more of a gray or gunmetal colored um, with the copper. So it's an all electric uh, three wheel scooter that is good for uh, 310 miles. Hmm. Little scooter is uh, 117.6 miles per gallon. It's got that uh, copper on to it there, you know. Well, yeah. you know, if you're, 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 your alternator is having problems, you just strip off the sides and <laughs> rewind it and put it in. So. 
Mm. Manny, the Venturi America. The Ace Venturi America. Yes. <laughs> not coming I thought in that was the, the US. Pontiac Ventura America. <laughs> it's not coming to the US, but uh, if you've ever wanted an electric dune buggy, this would be it. If you lived in Europe, <laughs> go key speed. <laughs> <laughs> speed buggy? Speed buggy. 300 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque, and it's a 3,100 pound car slash dune buggy car. It's got the same profile of the dune buggy, except less rails, more paneling, and the same amount of no doors. It's very and fewer, orange. And fewer sails. As in none? <laughs> and it doesn't talk as Close well. Close to it. <laughs> Bob, you've got the star of the show, arguably. I think so. I mean, I think, I think uh, for all of its, uh, its uh, copper and matte uh, quirkiness, the big, uh, big daddy Onyx is a pretty impressive piece of work. Uh, the thing weighs under 2,500 pounds, and they've got a – here's dead giveaway, by the way, that this vehicle will never make it into production. It's a Peugeot, and it's got a 3.7-liter V8. Okay? <laughs> they don't have a V8, and uh, it's, it's, it's a mere 600 horsepower, okay, augmented with an 80-horsepower uh, electric system, electric oh, drive system. Um, well, it's real easy to take a shot at Peugeot for these cars. They're never going to build in the real dopey. It's what I like about Peugeot right now, and Citroën to a degree. They are building 1950s-style American dream cars, and uh, really? nobody else is doing that. You know, where it's just shit. Let's just take off any any restriction. And let's build what we think of. And some of the U.S. stuff was dopey, but it was also neat to see uh, see stuff like that actually in three dimensions. The Ford but I bet, you know, it's like the, it's like the Statue of Liberty laid on its side, okay, and polished, kind of sort of. <laughs> Carbon fiber wheels, I breath. It's a very hang on, cool. hang on. There is a precedent for that. There is a precedent for that Citroen did a boron fiber wheel for the SM as an option in 1972 and 73. Boron, like boron, boron fiber. Boron, just lighter, boron. lighter than carbon fiber, hmm. and, and even even more expensive. I was going to say, so what is is it, did that sell at a thirty thousand dollar loss <laughs> per unit in 1969? Then, no, thirty thousand dollar per wheel. <laughs> Right. Okay. Yeah. And you notice he was. They were only so. losing eleven thousand dollars in every SM they built. <laughs> well, beautiful. What about what was on the interior of the Onyx? Craig, tell uh, us. You're sitting in it. Yeah. Oh, it's woven main coon scrapings. <laughs> is that what it is? Oh. Yeah. This is. Is nice. it soft, Craig? Is it soft? It's kind of oily. Is that kind of <laughs> musty? Did you leave Plans. a spot where you sat? Glands or mm. where would they, Bob? Where would they get this theoretical three seven V eight from Nissan? No, the new it, GM deal. No, because they're not they're not part of the organization. It GM is it's more likely it's something they built as a race engine. Remember they got a big race program, right? Okay. Used to, and they're doing their own race. So it's probably a race engine block they worked with, and bits and pieces. That wouldn't surprise me at all. What was Just what, while they've got what, it, it's not for mass the, production. Was the nine hundred eight race car V six diesel? Uh, yeah, but before that, they did a V8. I can't remember which one it was. It was the one that was had the dead flat uh, right. body. That was, a, that was a petrol V8. 901? Was that the 901? No, 901 was a Porsche, you fool. Oh, well, yeah, but Peugeot, <laughs> had, a 90, Peugeot had a 901 as well or something like that. Bob's bander is up. I'll be absolutely honest. I, I don't remember the numbers for the race cars. Okay. All right. Well, I moving should... on. Production. From the race to production. It. We're burning daylight, guys. The Ford Mondeo. Where have we seen this car before? Uh, I give up. It's a Fusion, the 2013 Fusion. Who would have thunk? Of course, the Europeans get all the fun stuff, including diesels and the one-liter EcoBoost engine we were talking about earlier. It's also a wagon body style. Now, here's an interesting thing. I was watching uh, European mm -hmm. videos last night of, of the Paris show and one of the English channels, uh, Evo TV. They were saying something that the wagon won't be available till 14. But even like the regular one over there is not going to be able to avail available till like well into late next year, and I find that hard to believe that the new Mondale. Yeah, hmm. I think they had their I think they had his dates wrong, but it was like, how yeah. we're getting the, this thing's on sale. The that was later. pre roll for a year hey, ago. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it was it. actually from oh, it man. was from this year's show. Yeah, Eric. Yeah. Yes, Eric, that's that's not that unheard of because they might be showing the car now because the the twin will be on sale in the states sooner. Mm. Okay, for okay. once. For once, we're getting something say, better this is sooner. Coming up. Yeah. Right. Well, that and the um, the Europeans work so slowly. They're not. They don't have so, that American work ethic. They can also rationalize it in a way is that they saw theirs officially first, as far as they were concerned. Okay. 
Oh, it came out before the American one did. They copied us. Yeah. Eric, Porsche, yes. 911 Carrera 4. Yes, the Porsche, the 911 that I would like to have as my daily driver since the turbo isn't available yet. Uh, basically, it's, it's the current new uh, 991, uh, 20 millimeters wider in the rear and with all-wheel drive. Excuse me, 22 millimeters wider in the rear. Um, it'll weigh an additional, it's 143 pounds lighter than the previous Carrera 4, which that's pretty substantial. Um, all, you know, all-wheel drive, all-wheel drive 911, yeah. What's I mean, it to say, rear engine, all-wheel Hundred starting, uh, where does it start at? $91,000. Manny, you're going to get us some pizza from Sbarro. This car is nuts. This is a, oh yes, I know this. The Sparrow Sbarro 8 concept. Franco's stuff is always nuts. <laughs> this, is, Francisco uh, Franco? this is a student project. Franco this, Sbarro. If John Milner were to have a car in 2012 or 13, this is what it would look like. <laughs> From the Monte, I'm going to butcher this, Billard School of Design, known simply as the 8. It is a Maserati sourced V8 engine, uh, reportedly designed and built in just eight weeks, and <laughs> That's very what does impressive. it look like? I didn't it know you could cure carbon listeners. fiber that quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a, it's a thirty. It's a yeah, thirty-two it, three window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's a thirty-two three window. You know that that had sex with a stealth fighter. <laughs> now, it's, exactly it's a two thousand thirty-two three yeah, window. Okay. Yeah, it's a two thousand thirty-two. It's ahead of its time today. I would I would drive the hell out of this car. <laughs> it's the first car to break the time barrier since the nineteen fifty-seven Plymouth. <laughs> does that mean it only do does eighty-eight miles an hour? No, it could be. <laughs> ben, I just teed you up. Yeah, good luck Not going to happen. Say it or hey, see, take a real seat. Qu real quick, Craig. Yeah. Uh, did we skip a three vehicles on purpose? Did we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which ones did we skip? Uh, oh, I guess we did. Ferrari Zenzo successor laid bare. I see. I'm scrolling back and forth here, trying to read ahead, but yeah, we, we've got to go. Well, you'll do the Hyundai and then... Uh... I did, yeah, Eric. Well, and there's a Kia, too. Let's just go Ferrari Enzo, Eric. I jumped ahead. Well, it won't be the, well, and they haven't typically called the neck the successors afterwards, so this will be the successor to the Enzo, which is the F-150, Ferrari F-150. <laughs> yes? Oh, I don't know. Yes. Is what it's called internally. Uh, oh, that's where you can't see the bed on it, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's back at the front. You see They've, that, Bob? And this is, uh, they built a complete carbon fiber cockpit for the uh, next Ferrari supercar. The seats are uh, molded in, or at least the back part of the seats is molded into the chassis, so the seats will not adjust. The pedal and the steering wheel will adjust. Uh, it's several different types of carbon fiber that are used. Some of it's bi-directional, some of it's monodirectional. And the bottom part of the tub has been re reinforced with a very, uh, quite a bit of Kevlar because the bottom is yellow, not black. Hmm. Well, now you know. Manny, Kia. Kia, Karens? Or is it Karens? Karens. Karens. Karen. Carpenter? <laughs> it's basically um, a, a rehash on the Rondo uh, hatchback that's available over in Europe, a new a new take on it, if you will. It, it's a, you know, it, it, it's somewhere in between an MPV and a compact or a compact hatchback. Very nice. I guess if you like those things and you live in Europe, go for it. It's the perfect vehicle for crowded Europe. Bob, another Mercedes Benz. It's a fine Mercedes Benz, a wonderful German car. This is a CLS shooting brake, the conver a station wagon, yeah, yeah. of the uh, bent in the middle because we took it out of the oven too quick, uh, CLS. <laughs> um, I think it actually looks a hell of a lot better than the CLS four-door coupe does, which, of course, means it's not coming to the United States. Yes. They're only going to let the Europeans have it. Yep. There's going to be, of course, an AMG-badged version that will be a CLS 63. And in between, of course, they're going to have the uh, 2.1 liter four that all Europeans will go gaga over, and be, some will be able to afford. And uh, then V6s, and of course the V8. But there you go. This is the uh, the wonderful Mercedes. It's too good for the United States. Bob, wh wh what is the origin of shooting brake? Shooting brake was a term that the name. landed gentry in England came up with for an impractical little station wagon that was a thing you took out when you went out shooting birds or ducks or some sort of animal that had every right to live and no way to defend itself. Um, and uh, they used the word brake because brake is what the French called station wagons. And they, of course, you know, they stole our word because the English are a bunch of thieves. You know? <laughs> no, that's, it, was a, it was a tossy term used for a uh, impractical station wagon used for carrying your guns because you couldn't be bothered with putting them in the trunk of your own car. Well, fancy. 
Yes, Ooh. it was. Very Ooh. much so. We, yeah. we enjoyed them tremendously, you know. <laughs> Whoa, hello there. Oh, that's Coming to you from the annual Ulaanbaatar International Motor Show in Mongolia. <laughs> anyway, next up is the Hyundai Gangnam Style iX35. This is supposedly the fir world's first serial production hydrogen fuel cell car, and Hyundai promises to have them on the road for private and public lease by the end of 2012. Huh? What's the What's the range? What's the range? Uh, you don't. Chances are you don't live near enough a fueling station, so it doesn't matter. Oh, because, Next because I was going to say you drive it once and leave it where it ran out of fuel, yes. right? No, they say range of up to 365 miles. But where the hell do you get fuel? You don't. So. Good thing it's a lease. Yeah. Zero to sixty-two of twelve point five seconds. Oh, that's hot. Frank, it's hydrogen. It's hydrogen fuel, right? Yes. You take it to one of those party stores. They blow up the balloons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ooh, Fill her up. Makes makes that natural natural gas uh, Honda you had the, the last time look swift. Oh gosh. Certainly. Are they still leasing those out in California? You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can still get them. Yeah. Wow. But something you cannot get. Take a seat, Bob. <laughs> Oh, God. Seat Leon. Um, Seat, of course, is v, uh, VW's little uh, <laughs> plant little on the long. Iberian Peninsula, a company they bought that was owned by Fiat that Fiat couldn't do anything with, so they decided to sell it. Uh, they ran Porsche engine cars for a while. Not joking. They really were. And VW bought them and has put VW guts underneath. And actually, they're quite, they're quite fun. Um, they tend to have really neat taut chassis, maybe a little on the firm side, uh, very, very evocative styling, and... Um, they they will the parts don't start coming off for about one and a half years. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's it's a it's a Euro VW. They're priced position wise. If you look at the VW price hierarchy, you got Audi at the top, then Volkswagen, then Seat, and then Skoda at the bottom. What about Bentley? I was only counting the ones that share the four cylinder engines. Oh. Although there could be a there could be a Bentley four with a turbo. Well, wouldn't soon. the W sixteen be just four of those <laughs> piled on top of each other? No, I thought that was no. two V8s intertwined. Which is two four-cylinders, of it. That would be four four-cylinders. Shut up! Anyway, Fiat is showing the Panda 4x4. Hmm. Compact little dinky crossover for the A segment in Europe. That's the tiniest of the tiny. Right sure, very, that's, the Pandas are very popular in Europe, aren't it they? It is very popular. Point nine, oh, I love this. The 0.9-liter twin-air turbo engine, 90 horsepower, pardon me, 80 horsepower from a sub-1-liter Every power plant. Every test of that engine that I have seen or read from European publications says it uh, gets less fuel economy than the larger engines. Mm, really? That it's strictly there for CO2. Hmm. Well, isn't CO2 fuel economy? Not always. No, to, to a degree, but, but there's a point at which there can be a gap, which has a lot to do with things like gearing and vehicle weight. <laughs> Optional, you get a 1.3 liter diesel. So you're ready to go climb mountains in your Fiat Panda. Perfect. What is next, Eric? The Dacia. Hey, big news. It's the new Dacia Sandero. <laughs> Sorry, I've been waiting to do that for... Is this another repeat? No, it's a, it's a top gear joke. Uh, Bob got it. He thought it was lame because it was about four years too late. Yes. Well, that, that is, that's uh, Jay Mays. We're bringing it favorite. back. We're bringing Jay it back. Mays. Jay Mays. Not Jay Mays. <laughs> It's, it's Billy Mays. No. <laughs> yes, it is. James Mays. Mays. James May. Yes. 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 Thank you. So they have a whole new car, and it has garbage wheels on it. It, does. Like, oh, it looks like it has 13-inch toy wheels with steel wheels on it. Or, That's or where you're wrong, Eric. Hubcaps. That's where you're wrong. They've integrated the steel, stamped steel wheels are an integral part of this vehicle's chassis design. They're more flexible than the alloys designed to give you the smoothest ride possible. But do you know what the biggest selling point of this whole car is? Smooth ride, clearly. No, it's sticker <laughs> price. Mm -mm. It's just 7,900 euros. When, when I, I have oh, to put fantastic. a hand up here. When I was at Proton, we actually bought a couple of dossiers and tore them apart. Um, it is fascinating, to be absolutely honest. They have, they have made a car that is uh, low-priced, and based on what they're doing, they're still making good money on it. So we may, you know, we may laugh at some of the stuff, but it's real interesting. The one thing they found when they started selling them in Western Europe was that the buyers were all people who were used car buyers. There wasn't a single new car buyer amongst them. So they've tapped a market that doesn't hurt themselves. It's pretty clever in that regard. Well, how do you like it? Yeah, I mean, this, is how, this is how Renault-Nissan is still continuing not to lose a crap ton of money is because of, of the uh, 
Dacia line is the Romanian subsidiary. Yep. Yeah. What do we have next, Manny? Mitsubishi Manny. The Mitsubishi. What do you call an Outlander Sport in France? Uh, too expensive, eh? You're not yeah, going that's to sell. What we said here in Paris. It's not a Royale with cheese. <laughs> it's the ASX. Mm. All you ASX. Need to care. <laughs> it, 115 horsepower, 1.6 liter gasoline engine, five-speed manual transmission, which I guess is cool in the two-wheel drive configuration. 300 mils on deck. Uh, you also have a 1.8 liter diesel, 147 horsepower, 221 pound-feet of torque, and a six-speed manual. I like the five-speed because then it's symmetrical when you have the reverse gear. And if you care about what comes out the tailpipe, <laughs> they have a low emissions 1.8 liter diesel with 114 horsepower. It's like an Audi grill upside down. Oh, it's so much Audi. <laughs> and is Mitsubishi still in business? It's just, it looks like a fat Evo. It's a fat Evo. The fat Mitsubishi Evo. Well, not much to say about that, but moving on, we, t we Bob, you covered, um, uh-oh, 25 minutes remaining on the clock. We better step yeah, look, up again. Look, before we get over, let me just say, check this out, okay? <laughs> please. Please check this out. It's with a check with a Z, of course. That's right. You covered is, Seat, is, Volkswagen's is, somewhat obscure brand. Now you're moving to their other one. This is Western Europe's version, okay? Of, of a Toyota Camry. Uh, oh, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> of, of a Jetta, basically, sold by Skoda. So it's the value value position Jetta, a Skoda Rapid. Center body is basically Jetta, and they have new nose and tail, some revisions to the interior. Um, the Jetta is a funny car because it hasn't sold hugely, but where these four-door sedans that we like in the States and they like in Asia sell really well in Europe is in Southern Europe. Italians tend to like them, Spaniards like them, the Portuguese like them. Don't the Russians uh, like them as well? And, I'm sorry? Russians, aren't they big on the four-door sedan? Yeah, they are too. And, of course, Skoda has some cred there. But the other thing that's confusing it, there's a Skoda Rapid built in Italy by uh, Skoda that is based on the VW Polo. <laughs> Same name. Okay, and it's just a size smaller, so go So figure. like a Hyundai Genesis. Mm. The same sort of thing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> just like that, only different. Um, but Skoda, it's real funny. We, people joke about Skoda. There's a thing they call a Q score, which is a branding score. And in Europe, Skoda's position is slightly below Volvo. So the old stories about, you know, why do Skodas have heated rear windows to keep your hands warm when you push them? Or how do you double the value of a Skoda by filling the petrol tank? Uh, they don't apply anymore. And they're, they're actually reasonably good cars. They're like V-dubs, and the parts don't start to fall off for about uh, two and a half years because they're all built in the Czech Republic. Is, well, that's where the land of the Tatras. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So check it out, everybody. Bob's favorite car of all time. I'm Except getting probably not. excitement. You're getting excitement. No, not a retardment, right? No, definitely not. Okay. Next up, another Audi. Imagine that. The SQ5, the brand's first S model with a diesel engine. Version of their, their uh, compact crossover. Gets a 309 horsepower engine, churning out 479 foot-pounds of torque. <coughs> Routed to the wheels through an eight-speed automatic transmission. No doubt that's set F model. What else? Zero to 62 miles per hour. 5.1 seconds. Engineers have dropped the chassis 1.2 inches, thrown on a set of 20-inch wheels, and it gets a bunch of other crap as well. Starting price, 58,500 euro, but uh, you can get up to $92,000, which is like the Auto Show special model, if I remember. They're doing it, um, get some special treatment crap. You can spend uh, a boatload more so money Audi, on it. So Audi has adopted the uh, Porsche. Or the Neiman Marcus sort of limited edition. I was going to say the, the Porsche option model. Model, never mind. Well, they're only they making like 35. They've actually had it for a while in Europe. Yeah. Where any, anything you want, you know, any color, anything, yeah, we'll, you pay for it, we'll do it. Yeah. It's done by the guys at Quattro in uh, Necrosulm, the old uh, NSU plant. The uh, aluminum plant, Necrosulm. I just saw, I just saw the um, Porsche put out a video last week or two weeks ago about their uh, bespoke stuff on the place you go to in Germany where they, you literally go in and... What, are, what do you want on your Porsche? And it's, it's also how you all special mm -hmm. order everything, interior colors, exterior yeah. colors. It's really cool. They actually have one in, uh, in Irvine, the hmm. same kind of yep. thing. Fancy. Uh, oh, the Hyundai i30 three-door, what would be known in the U.S. as a three-door Elantra GT. Um, so rather than five-door, this is a three-door uh, the Elantra was, is, a, is a very good car. The Elantra GT, I drove that a few months ago. Uh, very good. I liked it. it was certainly the, the hatchback style is much more functional than the Elantra sedan. 
Um, it should be a good car, but will it, we won't get the three-door here in America, so it doesn't matter. But will it blend? <laughs> no? No. <laughs> no, apparently that, that's a, a soft spot. Manny, what so have we got here? You have what seems to be an alphabet soup spilling all over the table. The PP. N M C N O A O. I'm not joking. That is the name of this car. Was it a Chinese company that made it? <laughs> Pole Performance Nevers Magni Coors is what the P P N M C okay. stands for, and it's a French uh, little race car, apparently known as the N O A O or Now. Supposedly pronounced No How. <laughs> what? <laughs> Making those? It's it's Ni Hao. <laughs> it's pronounced no how. What is no how? No way. Is that ever no going to see no production? Yeah. <laughs> no. 227 horsepower, 295 pound foot electric, 1,000 cc uh, electric motor. 1,000 cc electric, electric motor. Electric motor. Wait, it's a, a reciprocating electric motor. Twin electric motors, motor. I'm sorry. <laughs> cable of, this is ridiculous. Both twin electric motors capable of pushing out 227 horsepower, 295 feet of <laughs> torque. And there's also a 1,000cc three-cylinder range extender. Got it. And Whoa. it's 2,182 pounds. It's not a new reciprocating electric motor, then? I... No. <laughs> Who knows? No, it's not eco. You know, if it, if it were finished in a flat color, yes. it would be as exciting as the uh, Sabaro, wouldn't it? <laughs> Almost, but mm. with more stickers, and you know it's fast with the stickers. Wow. That's right. And the wow. stickers stickers actually serve a structural purpose. They can make the material lighter underneath it. And they hold it together when it gets cracked. Yeah, when exactly. <laughs> Bob, Toyota ah. Auris hybrid. Auris. Uh, this is a special model of a Toyota's car that is built only in the, for Europe market. <laughs> but in actual fact, it's a Corolla. Okay, so what they've done, they've taken the five-door uh, RS hatchback and they've kind of twiggled it a little bit and they have a hybrid where they throw uh, bits and pieces of the Prius C underneath it. So this is the way that uh, Toyota is trying to make uh, hybrids more appealing to Europeans who still seem to think that running around in diesels is better than hybrids because, of course, you get kind of benefits like cheaper fuel in some countries, but not in others. Um, I think... We may see the guts of this at some point in time in a Corolla hybrid, but I don't think we'll be seeing this thing. I actually admit that uh, I kind of like the five-door Wagonoid body, which wagonoid. is more like a wagon than most modern Wagonoids are. But it's a touring sports, so that's probably the reason. Touring sports villa. Touring sports, yes. It is a very, very excitement car. <laughs> don't you see? I like the blue around the Toyota logo. Yeah, like they do that on all, uh, all their hybrids. Even Lexus gets it done to them whether they like it or not. Mm. But why are all of the clean diesels in Europe blue? Blue <laughs> this or blue that? Blue motion? Add blue? Why? Blue tech? Because, blue t blue, because, because there's an Australian thing called blue tech. Have you ever heard of it? It's a removable adhesive, and everybody no. loves it. And that's why they did it, because they know the Aussies like that name, and it's real clever. So they did it for a market they don't sell many cars. Sure, why not? <laughs> I don't know. I, I was going to ask that. Why don't it be green tech? Yes, okay. exactly. Because blue is, blue is the new green. Uh, when you mix them uh, together, you get yellow. Uh, and look at uh, this. Uh, look, my eyes are green, okay? They're green, you can see. Okay, maybe not. They're blue because you're a duplicate of Jim. I know, but, but, but blue is the new green. According to Eric, we're going to have to go with it. Next up. Fiat 500 Abarth Fuori Siri puts the company's uh, customization abilities on display. We were just talking about this with both Porsche and another one, and Fiat is doing that as well. Apparently, there's the option to... You're live from Paris. I'm in Paris. I know. I'm up in the rafters here. There are gentlemen that are scraping the rust off the ceiling. Not that is, you can see that in the in audio there? version. Is it warmer in there than it was on the front of that motorcycle? It is, and it's, it's in fact, it's so warm, Ferdinand Piat is wearing his... Uh, Sweater and his scarf indoors. It must, ever, be, must be warm then. That story Jim was telling me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like August, it's ungodly yeah. hot, and he's wearing a sweater and a scarf. I don't know. Oh, okay, we're back outside getting some fresh city air. Oh, look at this, break. a Citroen Picasso taxi. I saw it. Oh, look at those babes, eh? Oh, they are yeah. fine French babes. How's your Galois, eh? I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it's derogatory. Galois is a cigarette, you know, a French cigarette. Oh, it's a night shot. Look at that. Right. You know that Paris is called the city of light. Did you know that? 
Look how bright it is, and it's dark. Yes, it is. It's very clever, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you know what the French say more often than anything else? Sacre bleu. No, they say, why can't everybody be like the French? <laughs> is that true? I don't believe you, but what I do believe, customization, only available on the Fiat 500 Cinquecento Abart model. This one's painted that, that matte finish with dark blue and yellow. It's supposedly the Olio Fiat livery that debuted at the 1976 Whoa. Monte Carlo they ran rally. ran the rally cars. No, that's clearly a U of M fan. <laughs> <laughs> University of Milan. Oh, but also, also this UC, could be a UCLA fan, too. Uh, I don't know if a U US, your bunch over there no, is that that's, fanatic. No, because that's a darker blue. U, UCLA yeah, would no, be like a powder right, blue. You're right, Eric. It is, it is darker. You're right. It's a, it's a, you're right. You're, point taken. Point taken. Just yes. as long as it's not the University of Spoiled Children, USC. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Daisy. Eric, you're up next. Yeah, so another, another vehicle we do not get in the U.S., nor will we ever get the BMW 135 X Drive. Not that we won't get a BMW new BMW 1 Series. We just won't get the three slash five door hatchback version. We will get the one with the trunk, which looks like it's missing a certain. It's too short for its width and height. So, this is the new One Series from BMW, uh, available with four. Oh, excuse me, all wheel drive. Now with extra frumpiness. I was not yes. a fan of the one. The Einer, not so much. Uh, and like all BMWs, it is now longer, wider, and heavier. And uh, so badass. Yes, Mr. Sullivan. Did you say that was bad? What did you say? That was badass? Could you say that again? So badass. Oh, yeah, badass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he needs I to re ask. I've got something in my headphone here. <laughs> Dander. So badass. Next Are up. Are we going to a Basque restaurant? Is that what you're saying? We, we have a V4. Volvo. A V40 cross country. It's basically, to me, it's a Swedish Audi All Road. That's a good way to put it? Yeah. It's a nice earth tone as well. It's called flat dark earth. <laughs> Is it flat black earth? Flat black and glows in the dark. I've, called I've seen sand. that color on some uh, IKEA furniture. Hey, right? hey, wait a minute. This is this is a tactical car. It's flat dark earth and black. <laughs> it's tactical. It's <laughs> camouflaged. Well, no, because FDE is the new no, camo. What does that mean? But you know, flat, uh, hang on. Look at just at that shot. The hood actually looks like it's got shine on it. It don't look that flat. It ain't flat. I know. It's got ribs in it too. Are they uh, are they uh, St. Louis style? <laughs> Or are they Memphis? Memphis style? dry rub. <laughs> okay. Which do you prefer, Eric? Depends on like my mood. KC I like masterpiece, both. don't you? No. <laughs> KC masterpiece. It was actually invented by a doctor, I heard. Excuse me. We're obviously not getting that car in America either. Well, it's kind of ugly. Sure. Yes. Bob, why don't you round us out here? How about with a car what we do get in America, admittedly in relatively low volume because they're not building a lot yet, is the good old Subaru BR. As we'd say in Australia, Z, mm. which is is as far as I'm concerned, the real. If you if you have, if I were buying one of these things in the states, I would buy the Subaru long before the one that's sold imported by Toyota because it's a Scion, and Scion is a defeatist brand for losers. Okay, <laughs> um, but okay. the Subi, the Subi, the Subi, this is their kind of take on it. It's real funny. It looked like an escapee from the SEMA show. It didn't really look like something you'd see at Paris. Uh, it's got. All the add-on, bolt-on bits and pieces, uh, but underneath it's uh, everybody's favorite car. Maybe a little bit of uh, this and that. A little razzmatazz, you're saying? Razz, tasma, tasma razz, tasma razz. And I'm looking forward. I'm actually looking forward to the uh, the two-phase STI cars on this. They'll be really interesting. I notice it has disc brakes. Why not drum? Uh, cost reasons. They're too cheap. <laughs> They're too cheap. <laughs> Yeah. Now, um, the, the, when I was working at Mazda, we had this guideline, and we used to joke, and it's one of the reasons at the time we, we said notice and proposals from Ford. The engine's car is the heart of the car and tells you whose car it is, in which case this thing is a Subaru. It's not a Toyota, even when it has a Toyota badge on it. Yeah. The engine's car? What? The, the car's engine. Okay. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm thinking in Japanese and speaking in English. It's a real problem. Oh, dear. The Sentence structure is somewhat different, you know. It's different for somewhat. Oh, very, very different compared to that. Don't lean back. You will fall many feet to your death at the bottom of the land on the roof of some car. Maybe you will put a stain on the copper finish with your blood. Is that, hey, Craig, if you look behind you yes. on your uh, left there, over your shoulder there, by your right, right shoulder, is that a 328 uh, BMW back there? Yep, sure is. Oh, yeah. Well, shucks almighty. Am I looking Not the right damn. way? No. 
got to be looking this way. There you Just go. imagine See the it? green screen, everything's backwards, and you don't even know it. Well, we got through 60 cars. Let's see a timer. Record. Ben, a timer. We've got seven yes. minutes. You're driven to minutes remaining. We've got enough time to talk about In the Garage, guys. A new record. Sweet. Eric. Yes. Ben, are you going to play the sound effect? Or do you have it queued up? No. I I'll do it live. I'll do it live. Ready? Oh, God, yep. no. Go ahead. All mm -hmm. right. Good. Now we take a peek in the garage. <laughs> and it's gargling ranch dressing. Is there a cam in there? Do I hear a cam? Yes, you do. Eric, why don't we start with you? Yes, yes. so yesterday, yesterday, as we taped this on Friday, yesterday I, I uh, had a chance to drive the 2013 Lexus LS. Uh, it has the, it's been updated for both interior and exteriors with its styling. The interior, the exterior has the, you know, the spindle grill styling. It looks quite good. Uh, the interior, if you like the Lexus GS, the dash is pretty much the same. Uh, styling, it drives reasonably well for a big luxury car. Uh, I was disappointed, actually very disappointed with the materials in the interior, uh, especially in the Executive 600L long wheelbase hybrid thing, which will be probably be a hundred thousand dollars. The materials and that were not, in some ways, not even as good as what's in the GS. So, Eric, Eric are you talking like IP or door trims or what? I'm just curious here. As, um, I guess the best example you'd like in the the the, the IP, the materials in the IP are fine, okay. um, but it, yeah, the door trim materials, especially the seat materials, um, okay. it's it's they say, oh, the leather's very supple. It feels like cheap leather to be honest with you it doesn't have oh, i thought the opposite i thought that was terrifically soft i'm sorry but I, well but if you compare it to what's in uh what's in the jag what's in a mercedes what's in an audi no it Got wasn't it. even close wasn't even close okay. the thing, i was just curious what because what what because often they screw up with the the stuff in driver's vision and some of the tact, uh, tactiles there that's why i was curious yeah i mean it drove i mean it draw it, if you be the difference between comfort and like the sport s and the air suspension car there was there was a big difference in it um, and it drives fine. I mean, it's a big luxury car. It's not supposed mm -hmm. to be a sports car at, at all. It's an executive luxury car. So you drive um, but after as blown, a long day at the office. But as blown minutes. away as, mm -hmm. as I was with the GS, I was hugely underwhelmed uh, with this. Now, the, the one cool thing they do is they, do, they have a, uh, one wood trim in there, which is... Shimamoku. Shimamoku, yeah, which is 67 steps in 39 days. And, I mean, the steering wheel must cost about $6,000 to make. It's ridiculous. Wow. But it the looks wood is nice, but it's it, not that. It's, yeah, like, it's plywood, it's, basically. Well, it's pretty, but they overstain it to make <laughs> it too dark, and you really can't see yeah. all the all the beautiful graining that you can when the wood is is much rawer. They take um, a cowrie log to some pine tree, yeah, and they roll cut the veneer off of it, and then they layer it and glue it together, and then slice the end grain off. It, it I mean, it's, it's it, weird. It could be cool. Um, I, I do. One of the things I do like is that they are. They are offering a number of colors in the interior, which look really good. Um, they don't go with like either. I mean, they have a, the standard like whale gray and black, which are like yeah, whatever. Sperm whale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, yeah, but I mean, they have a tan. They have like a tobacco color and, and um, one other colored interior. I can't remember what it is, but the, those look really good. I like the colors they're using. It's just the materials. You don't feel like you're in an eighty thousand dollar luxury car. I was going to say, how much did it cost? They uh, pricing will be announced in like three weeks, I think it is. Well, um, but yeah, it's it's you know it'll be a seventy eighty thousand dollar car. Certainly, I mean you you didn't you said you didn't like it as much as the GS. The G, the but GS, the, this I is think just it's, a refresh too. Yeah, this is just. I know. This is like the mid midlife facelift, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, but they're trumpeting how they're you know three thousand of the six thousand parts are all brand new, and you would think that in a refresh when you're redoing the interior that you'd upgrade the materials as well. Mm -hmm. Or some I of the think, materials. So. I thought the materials were fine, personally. I don't know. Go, go get that, and then go look at a Jag, uh, the XJ, or a. Um, well, we just like had the S -class. XKRS, in, and. Uh, yeah, but that's. No, you, you need to look at an XJ like for this. For yeah, you have to. I, I know. I know what. I know what Eric's saying is right. Mm. Anyway, I was in, also we had the BMW M6 in the office, which I got to drive the convertible. Nice. Hated it. Six thousand pounds. Awful car. Oh, I drove it one night and I gave it to Ben and said, you drive it, because I don't want it. I don't want it. Just too much for you? No, it was, it's terrible. Every single thing on the car is, a, is synthesized. 
This is M6 convertible, right? M6 convertible. The steering Remember is Remember we were like, talking about earlier, okay? What? You, you, you take the sport, you take the, these hardcore versions, and you rip the roof off, and you got problems starting, and maybe this is just some of that. No, 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 no. This, uh, this is a systemic failure of M, of BMW's <laughs> M division, because this car, I, I, I don't want to drive it again. I had it one night. I'm like, I'm done. So, so could, would you use the word putrid? Yes. Okay, Pustule, cool. maybe. Pustule. Using... Mm. The steering is, everything is so artificial from the way the throttle tips in to the way the engine sounds, the exhaust note, the, the, uh, the way the transmission shifts, the take off. You can't even take off smoothly. It was an automatic. There's seven-speed dual clutch. And you, you tip in and nothing happens, nothing happens. And the clutch starts to take up. And then you tip in a little more because it's not accelerating. And then the car lurches. It's just awful. And that's, I tried all the different settings. There's, you can adjust the steering. You've which never is, driven an automatic transmission that had a high stall converter, have you? <laughs> no. <laughs> you might say you know what I'm talking about, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's unacceptable. <laughs> For the street, it was awful. Does but, that have the hey, exhaust coming out the, 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 the speakers too, like the M5? I think they synthesized the exhaust too. Okay. Why? What happened to M? What is going on with BMW M? They're supposed to be driver's cars. It's connect. catering to its customers. An extension of the driver's yeah, very soul, and they're synthesizing no, no, the whole thing. No, M is now a... Uh, a profit Life center. Of course, but... Hold on. Profit center and lifestyle division. Yes, yes. Thank you. <clears throat> profit, style, profit and lifestyle division. Yes. You can like tell Porsche. there are a lot more cars I'd rather have spend half as much on than the 125000 they were asking for this M6 convertible. Speaking about no, 125 grand, Manny, <laughs> you know, the, the 427 convertible I had uh, last weekend, 91 grand. 91. It's, it's a Z06, basically, with a drop top, but there's... Some significant differences from that from the Z06. One is that they utilize a steel uh, chassis instead of the Z06's aluminum one, and uh, they, you know, and, and the other one is just as a drop top. Four and minutes. You would, you would think that it would essentially ruin the experience, and to a degree, I mean, the, the car does like shake. It does rattle a lot, and, and there's a lot of. Does it roll? Does it what? <laughs> roll. It shakes, it, rattles, it, rolls. Shakes, it rattles. It rolls. Um, it, it does like really sweet burnouts. <laughs> You can you can rev that thing all the way to I think I think the red line is seventy one hundred RPM. It lets you LS, dump the clutch at that. The LS <laughs> no, uh, the LS seven V eight though is just it's my new favorite engine. There's there's so much like power to just like pull out you know as you just put your foot to the floor. Seven whole liters. It and it's just it's raw. It's mm -hmm. so raw. There, there's there's something you really have to appreciate. It's it's delightfully. It's Delightfully visceral, delightfully mm -hmm. unrefined. You know, there's you have a six speed trans. Everything about it is just like it's. I was sore from driving it on Sunday. <laughs> so it's like a first gen Viper, almost. I mean, but with stability control. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't sound like a tuned UPS truck. Yes. Oh, ten no. cylinder. The the upshift that on this car, like when you when you're going from like one two into two three, the the noise it makes is. It, Ungodly. It's ungodly. The re it's it's Jiffy Pop in the back there. It's like Zeus is just throwing thunderbolts. <laughs> I'm serious. Metaphor. It's it's so loud and it, it's just bass heavy. That alone is just that's just what you want to drive with. And on the freeway, it kind of sucks. You're just like, boom, 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 boom. You're, like you're feeling everything. And I took it all the way up to Traverse City to do some back roads <laughs> driving. It was a day trip, and we, uh, yeah. It's quite a long day. It was about ten hours of driving. Uh, you know, there and uh -oh, back in the back roads. trying to gesticulate violently to get our attention. Two minutes, apparently. Two minutes, but yeah, but that's, we're wrapped up. I ben. absolutely love the. We're done here. We gave the well, audience. What was in my garage? What's in your garage, Bob? My, because uh, I'm, I'm hanging sorry. loose here at. I'm my, sorry. Uh, my brother-in-law's place, as he travels a lot, his his uh, 680 horsepower D3 uh, uh, oh. CTSV sedan is sitting there. Oh. oh, it's fun to drive. Go on, <laughs> go it's on. Fun to drive. How, many, how many tires yeah. have you you gone through? <laughs> no, it, Moss is just it, that car is his pride and joy, oh, and uh, it is just it's delightful. Hoot and a half. Now, what did you say? D three. Yeah, D three. The Cadillac Tuning Program okay. in California. Okay. Because I know there's a uh, uh, Koenigsegg. No. Hennessy. Hennessy. Yes. Hennessey. They had a thousand D horsepower. D three. D three stuff yeah. is, is is better thought out than Hennessy's is. If I may be. So Hennessy cool. just goes for the number. I think. Yeah. yeah exactly. There's no thousand. finesse involved. How do you handle a thousand horsepower on two wheel rear tires? Well, it's not as well as engineered as you know most serious like tuning companies like yeah. D three or Roush even. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, look at that. We're down to the last minute, Ben. We can wrap this up. We are done. We gave the audience more. We gave them 60 cars, 90 minutes plus in the garage. I'd say that's a success, folks. Yep. And your tour of Paris. Yay! Raise the roof, Craig. Raise the roof. Mm -hmm. Literally, mm -hmm. raise the roof. Mm -hmm. Robo Craig. Now, Craig. That noise, of course, means our 90 minutes are up. But wait, There's there is more. more. Craig, I think, is going to make an announcement. Oh, I think he is. Ben, there is a big announcement to make. Would you like to start it off? Important news. I'm too emotional to say it. Are you? Yes. Are you really? Mm. Cyrus should be here. Well, we'll look at you as I, because since there's no camera on me this week, we'll get a good look at you. So take a good look at this face. Okay. And I'll do a zoom on you. Um, How do you zoom? You can't um, zoom on Scientifically. There. It's not possible. Scientific. Scientifically? Scientifically. Oh, look. That's enough. It can be done. <laughs> My eyes will key out if you get any closer. They are green. I actually am seeing bits and pieces of the background through your face. Now I'm but seeing wait. bits and pieces of nothing because it's all a blur. <laughs> uh, see. But, a, but a scientific blur. <laughs> all right, so we'll see if he tears up here. So, um, we mentioned last week that we had passed our three-year anniversary. We did. It, it's true. It did. It's true. <laughs> Ring. Um, it's been a good three years, but we regret to announce that Roundabout has run its course. <laughs> Almost. Almost. It's for real Nearly. this time. Yep. If you're a long-time fan, of course you remember that we did pull a prank last year uh, and say that we were going off the air. Whoops, sorry, I almost lost your body there, Craig. Whoa! <laughs> 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 God, looks, like, looks like Doctor Who all of a sudden. <laughs> Are you flying around with the joystick? Puck? Sorry. Yeah, Exterminate. I'm just trying to zoom you back out. Exterminate. <laughs> so, no, this is for real. Um, it is the end of the end of the day. Three years was good. Checkered flag is out on roundabout. Yep. So, no, no, actually, this is the last lap flag. Yes. Last lap. Flag. Exactly. Next week will be the last. Checkered flag edition. Lap. And there is a reason. It's not, you know... It's a good not, reason. Not that things weren't uh, going friend. well. You know, things were... They were going. Views were kept going up and all that stuff. Were they? And it's a had a lot of hard, hardcore fans. And But fan do, do you want to yes, explain? Yes, I have received... I have uh, taken a new job offer with another company, so I will be leaving Autoline and Blue Sky Productions. So that is why the Roundabout Show is regrettably going away at this point. Ben, are you still zooming up on me? I didn't ask you to. It's quite all right. You, can... you don't always get what you want. There we go. <laughs> a little uh, something in there. So anyway. our host is taking leave, and uh, yep. I couldn't. I, I personally couldn't imagine Roundabout without my co-producer Craig Cole. Oh, so we're, Shaw. we Shaw. are very very excited for his new opportunity. Thank you, Ben. Thank and... you for thank you for all of the fans that have joined us from the, the dark early days. For a, a bumpy roundabout ride, killing off Zach Bowman, <laughs> <laughs> we, Jeff Ross. Jeff Ross yeah. went to the wayside. Stephen Ewing. Yeah, Stephen Ewing. Steven. You guys know it better than I do. So pretty much everyone who we killed off went to Autoblog. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> we were a training ground they're for Autoblog. Yeah, they're on the Autoblog podcast. Auto so Manny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I hope you've got your resume in. Yeah, uh, I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't everyone? Seems that way. Um, so, but this wasn't the last show. Don't next freak week out. Next will be a big blowout but it's party next of week. sorts. Yes. So what we're doing is one last great show. Of course, you've seen our, like, you know, uh, season openers and season closers before, and we've always, like, reviewed the old stuff. And you know what? We, we decided we're not going to do that this time. It's we, a lot we, of work, We've done that. Shh. Quiet. We've done that before. <laughs> And I think you can go back and take a look at the work. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to do one last awesome show. And we're going to invite everyone who's been on the show, who wants to come on the show, all of our greatest pals 
to do one last awesome show. We'll do the news of the week. We'll do some games. Maybe it'll be a longer show. We'll see. But that's next week, mm-hmm. episode 145. Be there for the final episode of Roundabout for Real Z's. Luke is dead. Ben, I, yes, you Bob. Were telling me, I, I don't know if you told Craig this, and maybe I shouldn't be saying anything, man, but you were telling me it is going to be longer. The show is going to be about six and a half months long. Yeah, I hope that's not an issue. <laughs> oh, no, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Just I'll have to disappear every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, correct, uh, this, there's, a, there's a strong possibility there may be a certain Hall versus Hall uh, presence on this oh. episode coming Oh, goodness. Is Absolutely. that true? It's possible. It's possible. Uh, it's possible. Okay. There ought to be. We would appreciate... I think Hall versus Hall was an integral part of the roundabout canon, so I think it would only be appropriate mm-hmm. if we could include but that we, in the final show. But we have to show. thank all of our fan, and well, you know, we mentioned the folks we've lost. But Eric, you've <clears throat> here, been here basically from day two <laughs> because you weren't here from quite the beginning. But well, I wasn't the original pilots. But uh, shortly thereafter, <laughs> you were there in spirit, very nearly. And but Michelle Naranjo, Michelle is our true originalist. She has so. never wavered, never faltered, never failed to show up on the Roundabout Show when asked, when needed. Even when she wasn't scheduled that day, she showed up. <laughs> Even when she didn't want to show up, she showed up for us. Let me give her a round of applause <laughs> for being just as dedicated as. Mr. Sanders. She's in the chat box right now. She is in the chat, chat box. In storm. I have being screened a, with them a few times. <laughs> being a motor the road mouth, trip a number motor. of years ago. Luigi B is applauding. Luigi B. So, yes, thank you guys for everything. It's been a tremendous run. We're glad you've enjoyed the show. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We're glad to have produced it for you. And, uh, yeah. Join us next week. Please do. That's when we say our real goodbyes. That's when it's Elphine. Will there be, like... Snacks. Cake. <laughs> uh, there'll be a cake. Pizza. Jimmy Possibly. John's. I don't know. We can make this happen. <laughs> kegs. Um, I would say no on the kegs. I would say but... why not? I'm <laughs> yeah. done. YOLO. Yeah, Craig doesn't have to come back. YOLO, Ben. I'm yeah, YOLO. I'm vomit off the tile here. What does it matter? So, yeah, we'll bring in snacks or something. And, and Bob's got his snack cave, so he's all stocked. Temple of Snack And uh, so, yeah. there you go. But, bef- okay. Oh, so uh, Bob's going to show us one of his signature Inter- snacks. International s- signature snack, ISS. Super, Super popcorn. popcorn. Super popcorn. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. He's actually like the world's largest uh, Kellogg sugar pops. <laughs> they, they are huge. And, like and they are sweet. cereal. So there you go. Yeah. But, but wait, there's more. With less, with less caramel, though. Yes. So <laughs> awful. <laughs> Or like the this Reese's is one of my favorites. Once I was like, no, I'm done. Well, oh, the Reese's Puffs. My Choco buddy had like a weird addiction to that. He would not. Choco, Choco flakes. Choco flakes. Mm. But it's but it's strawberry. See, I'll leave a box of Reese's <laughs> just for him when he comes over. Right. You should say, see, strawberry. It should be strawberry flake. No, it's chocolate flakes. <laughs> and everybody's favorite, chipotle's. The only chipotle flavored snack that actually tastes like chipotle. And guess where it's made? Hecho in Mexico. <laughs> Close to Mexico. My Mexa snacks is Karen Bolton. Mexa snacks. <laughs> By the way, Miss Motormouth says that she would bring sandwiches. <laughs> however, the plane <laughs> tickets cost a thousand or more. So. Cup of Kool Aid, wasn't it? Cup Kool-Aid. of Kool-Aid. cups of Kool Aid <laughs> to go with the sandwiches after we got home from school. Maybe my like grandma can make a soup or something. But but hopefully not the kind of Kool Aid they used to serve in Guyana. You guys are gonna say yeah, Mr. Jones is uh, right. oh, yeah. Jonesville, Jonestown, town, Berg, <laughs> Jonesburg. Uh, Jonesburg is a, a Route 10 reference. Oh, sorry. Yes, it's next to right. Jepson Township, I think. And Oceanaburg is. is one of its primary attractions. but it's Just stay, stay away from Sorrel. Sorrel's a crummy it's town. It's a very crummy what a horrible town. We've got to pick an episode title, though. Or should I wrap the show first? Let, Perhaps let's wrap, I'm wrap not this gonna thing plug the this heck stuff. up. Just Torque because. of the town. Oh, I want Torque that. of the town. I already yes. wrote that down. I think that's what it's going to end up being. But, uh, yes, thank you guys for everything. You can always subscribe to Roundabout if you want to relive some of your favorite moments from the past. Enjoy them again in the future. Uh, iTunes, you can do that, or via Stitcher for your smartphone. Stream it live at your convenience. And with that, thanks to all of you out there listening. Please join us again next week for our last and final and ending, and I'm out of redundancies, episode. We'll see you then. Whoa! Oh! I'm upside down. I'm a ghost. Oh!
cutting my fingertips off. Whoa. Whoa. I don't know. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Here, do it again, Craig. <laughs> should that be? Should that be? Uh, waka, 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 yeah, waka, pack. Oh, yeah, that's right. Here. here, again, Craig. Ready? Oh, he's always Gangnam styling. <laughs> Are Puka and Figar anywhere around here? Wait, wrong game. Sorry. 